So we're talking about the two different types of lifestyles that you live on the planet. So when it comes to personal religion, when it comes to religion in general, it's about that there's different lifestyles or modes of living that you can take. All right, so the two ways to live on the planet. You got the freestyle way, which is where you just basically let the physical body do just as it pleases. You have your mental body controlled by what other people think. And then you have your spiritual body and mind used only for rituals, magic, and just for good impressions it can make on other people. This leads to a life of many confusions and unhappiness. Ask me how I know, okay? All right. Then you have what we call the religious life. And the religious life is devotion, to, devotion and loyalty to our supreme reality and values. We're going to talk about that today. Uh, faith in values over impulses, trust in principles over chance, and assurance of your reality despite uh, contrary appearances. And that leads to a life of peace and progress. And basically, in today's lesson uh, and our remaining 30 minutes, I'm going to go over what that religious life looks like. When you have a personal religion, I'm going to go over what that life looks like um, in comparison to the life of the what I just call just living. So there has become a, a growing trend of unpopularity with the term religion, or people love to say, I'm not religion, I'm spiritual. And what I've realized, what I've observed in my 3,000, over 3,000 readings I've done and just the coaching that I've been doing over the past five years and in my own life is that there is a lot of importance of living a religious life. And I'm gonna talk about that what that why that is today um versus just living a life where you are not uh guided by any type of values or principles except those which i pointed to over here on the freestyle just whatever your body wants to do whatever your mental body is afraid of people thinking about it and then just preserving that spiritual body and mind for just good um, impressions or doing rituals of magic. And I have created a lot of confusion in my life when I live that way and versus when I'm living a religious life, personal religious life. So we're going to talk about that today. All right. Are y'all all aboard or are you all bored? All right. All right. Good, good, good. All right. So there's a important quote that I love and it says whoever devotes themselves to development of their higher powers of mind and spirit will certainly find personal happiness and the happiness they experience will be in exact proportion to their genuine personal religious faith and today's lesson is basically going to explain to you why that is the case why your happiness is directly synonymous and equal to your personal religious faith. All right, so religion, the definition of religion we're using for this series is this here, devotion and loyalty to supreme reality, higher values in one's everyday living and conduct. So that is the term of religion, the definition of religion that we are using today. The key words being devotion and loyalty to supreme values and a higher reality. All right. So let's talk about supreme realities and values. How many people have ever heard of the book, The Holographic Universe, or have even heard of the, about the theory that we live in a holographic realm and world? There are some amazing books out here that if you haven't familiar, if you're not familiar with it, I would encourage you to check out. One of them being the holographic universe, uh, the other one being the field, uh, and another one being the source field investigation. And all of these books and this information basically summarize that we live in a very holographic universe. And what that reveals to us is that if we live in a holographic universe where everything we see, touch, feel, and experience in our 3D world is a hologram, there must be some supreme reality, some original place that the hologram is coming from. 
and that original place that the hologram is being casted from or being projected from would be what we refer to as a supreme or the ultimate reality meaning it is the source it is the code that our hologram is being built from all right so there is a supreme reality um, where our world build where we build our world from and where we create from let's talk about that a uh, little bit versus in the value so this may be a little confusing but there is a difference between supreme values and that which has value but when we're talking about personal religion and creating a religious life we're talking about supreme values and values okay so when it comes to supreme values Supreme values are those qualities, those things, those aspects, those real aspects that belong to the ultimate world, the ultimate reality. For example, one supreme reality value is the idea of a supreme deity, a supreme being, right? What that supreme being is like, what his name is, the concept of it, we don't know. Um, but what we can all uh, feel and know is there is some higher power. That's a value. There is a higher supreme being, divine intelligence, one mind, central force of the universe. Um, there is some it. And that is a value of the ultimate reality. That which has value is things that you do in your day-to-day -day life, you do on earth, that has lasting positive consequences versus just doing something temporal here. So here's a good parable that, um, that I'll use from the story of Jesus. Um, and throughout these Sunday school lessons, I'll be using a lot of parables from the Christian tradition. So Jesus was talking to his disciples and they asked him about a question about marriage in the afterworld or in heaven. And there was a Jewish custom that required that if a, if a, um, man's, a man died and his wife was left a widow, it was his brother's responsibility to marry that widow and provide and take care of her. So the Jews had, or his disciples asked Jesus this question. They said, hey, if a man dies and his brother marries his wife, and then that brother die, and another brother marries that wife, who will be married to her at, in heaven? And Jesus told them, look, y'all, that, that question has no value because in heaven, there is no marriages. Y'all are thinking about earthly matters that don't translate to higher matters. That's a very small parable about lasting values and that which is, uh, th that which has value. So, the concept of marriage on earth, there may have been some value for, for it as an institution to raise children, to come together, to provide companionship. But what Jesus was trying to communicate to his disciples is that does not carry over and have lasting value on the other side. That doesn't have cosmic value or cosmic significance. So that's just a small example. There's a thousand of those examples um, when it comes to our personal religion and religion. So there's things that has value, and then there's things that have lasting value beyond just the earth realm. When we use the word value, I am in this lesson that we're gonna be going over the next few months, I use values and truth synonymous. So my definition of truth is that which is a value from the supreme reality, or that which has contained lasting value. So let's begin to get in the paradigm shift of using the word truth or truth to mean that which is a value or that which contains, uh, that which represents lasting true values for your life on earth, as well as your life after earth. All right, moving right along. All right, so let's talk about the law of attraction because the law of attraction is the basis of why we need a personal religion. So everyone's familiar with the law of attraction and this is coming from Wallace D. Waddles. Um, but basically the law of attraction suggests that we are a thinking center 
and we create thought in this field, in this holographic universe, we build our own realities with our thoughts and our minds. Well, the issue with that is that we are normally subject to think according to appearances. So every appearance in the visible world suggests to your mind that here is a reality for you. And by looking upon that appearance and giving it our thought, giving it our energy, we create that thought in our mind. So if we look out on the world of lack, if we look out on the world that's a harsh reality, where our lives are in jeopardy, where things we have to fight for our survival, we produce that thought, we produce that, in our, that value in our mind, and that mind creates that, our mind creates that as our reality. All right, we learned from evolution that our mind and our body is driven by fear. We are fearful by evolutionary, our evolutionary nature just makes us fear. Fear is a very guiding, moving, powerful stimulant for an evolved animal. It helps that animal survive. Uh, evolutionary religion was built around fear, but fear causes us to focus our thought on the thing we do not want. In last week's lesson, we talked about um, the evolutionary humans and our ancestors' preoccupation or uh, obsession with whatever was gonna cause bad luck. They did not remember things that were, brought them good luck as much as they never forgot that which they associate with bad luck. Our mind tends to focus on all the things that we do not want. It is part of our nature, it's part of our evolutionary inheritance. Your mind will always go to the opposite. If you win a million dollars today, your mind is instantly gonna go about the, what can go wrong now that you have a million dollars. If you were to meet the love of your life, if you're single, your mind, uh, by evolutionary nature is going to go to the fear of losing that love or losing whatever it is that you have created. And it's this focus on the one on one of things that tends to attract to us that which we actually fear. When you think about higher truths, you have to think about it is your body, your mind, training your mind to think about beyond appearances, to use your mental power, use your mental abilities to think according to truth, think that which is of the supreme reality, that which has the highest value. And to think according to truth, regardless of appearance, requires a lot of effort. And this is extremely true whenever your appearances are contrary to the reality that you want to create, to the supreme reality. It is, in, it is uh, extremely hard to communicate, to, it's extremely hard for you to be able to hold the idea that there is a loving, friendly universe when you are in the midst of emotional suffering and turmoil. When you are surrounded by lack, when you're surrounded by poverty, or you're surrounded by situations or a life that you're not happy with, it is very hard to hold your mind to believe the universe is friendly, the universe is providing you with what you need and is in support of you. But the aim of that worship instinct that we have been given the use of that, the rightful use of that urge and that worship instinct is for us to be able to use our mind, use our concentration to focus on higher truths, higher realities, and supreme values in the, in the, in, in the middle of contrary appearances. Uh, again, I, I always love to use the analogy from the hymn, All is Well with My Soul. That analogy that, that hymn was written after uh, the author lost his children and his wife um, to a shipwreck or some catastrophe. And he was able to force his mind to think upon a higher reality that he will once see them again, that all will be well. And he was able to write that hymn, All is Well with My Soul. It's a very powerful uh, ability 
uh, if you can use your mind to focus on the supreme reality despite contrary appearances, which is the essence of religion. All right. All right, so like I said, that is the essence of religion. The word religion comes from the Roman word uh, that means to go through again and again in reading or in thought is from the word re, uh, the prefix re again, plus the uh, girl to read. So the idea is that you are forcing, forcing your mind to consistently, consistently hold over and over again, despite all your contrary appearances, despite everything that is coming in front of your physical, visible eyes and in your senses, you're forcing your mind to think the same thought over and over and over again, the same high thought, no matter all the contrary appearances, no matter all the contrary experiences that is coming to you, you're making your mind hold that one thought this is my truth. This is the reality that I'm living in. And when you hold that truth to that, you are going to be able to um, create and manifest a world that reflects whatever you've been holding that thought to. And that sustained and consecutive thought of your personality, of your habits, of your behavior, your intention is where the Romans referred to as a person's religion. That's where that word originally uh, originated from all right and the real essence of religion is again it's really the simple simply the sustained and consecutive faith trust and assurance in one's supreme realities and values regardless of appearances so when revealed religion when you read something from abraham hicks when you read something from edgar casey the book of urantia the law of one whether you're reading the revelation of Jesus saying that God is a loving father, you don't have to worry about your needs, your temporal needs being met. When you read those truths and you hold that in your reality and you let all of your thoughts align with that reality over and over again, despite all your contrary appearances, when you do that in your interactions with your other, other humans, with, with your work, with your pleasure, with your service, that is the essence of a religious lifestyle. All right, I'm going to stop and just get a quick break before I get too deep into it. I don't want to, I want to answer questions or I want to make address any comments or any insights anybody got I want to add before I go too deep into it. Please feel free to open up your mic and share or speak or get some clarifications or give some feedback. Hey. Yes. So um, I'm thinking that you are going to tell us some things that we can do um, that will help us hold our high thoughts and, you know, um, I guess like what kind of work goes into like, like knowing, uh, like being on, like having truth about, you know, your habits and what you believe, you know what I mean? Like, what's that process? Am I making any sense? Is that question? Yeah, it make makes sense. And that's the whole point of this course. So this whole point of this course is to create a religion, create your values, create your loyalties that you can live your life up every day. You can figure out what is your revelation of truth that you're going to be aligning with and how do you stay loyal to those truths. Today's lesson, I'm just setting the context of the importance of why we need one. Okay, got it. Because, you know, um, like Abraham Hicks, she says things like, if you hold a thought for 17 seconds, that's like the... Um, I guess, you know, that's like your creation point, like holding a thought for 17 seconds. And then, yes. you know, like, I guess, cause some days I feel, you know, you know, some days I feel great and, and I'll kind of joke around and be like, but I kind of don't have a whole lot. 
you know, but it, everything's all good. And then some days I'll like panic. Yes. Yes. And that's, and it is those days of panicking is where you're going to have, you have to force your mind to stay aligned with what is your high truth that you're believing in. And your religion would be, what are your practices? What are your loyalties that you do to stay in line with that, that supreme value and that supreme reality? And now, and now you can see why, what the reason, again, I'm going over this today to show us to set the context for why it's so important to have a personal religion. Because there are days where your outer world is going to be like, go crazy, all right? And, let, and think, it's, it's going to try to give you another a suggestive thought to think something differently. But if you can consistently and consecutively align your thoughts as well as your actions, as well as your intentions with your supreme reality, and you create practices, you create rituals, you create a template, you create a whole behavior and lifestyle habits that help keep you in that. That's what creating a personal religion is about. So it's about loyalty to truth and values. True religion is insight by faith into the supreme reality values and truths. It's aligning with a supreme reality and those truths and values through faith. So faith is you have to be able to look beyond what is a for presented to you and you have to hope and have this sense of, I am believing for a reality that I cannot see, a reality that I am hoping will manifest. And when you align with that, you let that reality, you let those truth, you let those values lead and dictate you wherever they may lead and dictate you at. All right. Um, so true religion is very creative, very original and spontaneous. Um, it's not bound by creeds of this institutional religious authority. So the difference in a personal religion is you're, it's very original and spontaneous because your, your revelation of insight for, of those realities and those values are changing and evolving every day you do a meditation, every time you pray, every time you hear new truths, every time you hear new, new revelations. Institutional religion are creeds that say, we believe this, and they stay the same for 2,000, 3,000 years. And this is where institutional religion that we all, anybody who's in this course understands has problems with because for us to try to live into the realities and the truths and the philosophies from 3,000, 2,000 years ago in the world of smartphones, in the world of Facebook and social media and instant everything, that's going to cause a lot of conflicting problems. You can, there's no way we can be bound by the same philosophy, the same creeds, the same truths from people from 2,000, 3,000 years ago. You can't even live in the same philosophy and truth as your parents did 30 years ago because their world don't fit our world. And so a true religion is always creative, it's always evolving, and it's always a very original and personal to you and your reality, your values, and how you line up with your life. All right, let me talk a little bit more about institutional religious authority. Um, and this is where most people have developed a hate for the term religion, a hate for the word religion. So institutional religion, it is a belief and it's a loyalty and it's a devotion, not to values, not to a supreme reality, but it is a loyalty and devotion to traditional um, authorities from the past. It is the loyalty and devotion to past people's experiences and whatever the authority said 2,000, 3,000, 100, 300 years ago. And those institutional religions are what we refer to as what we distinct from is those people who are just loyal to decrees. They're just loyal to the lifestyle habits of the tradition that were created from people who were actually living personal religious lives. So you take a person like the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, who wrote half the Christian uh, New Testament, had a very personal religion, right? Basically, Christianity is Paul's personal religious loyalties. But you got people living 2,000 years, living their life, trying to live a line to Paul's personal religion. That's going to cause a lot of problems, 
and that's going to cause a lot of hypocrisy and it's going to it's going to cause a lot of uh limitation it keeps you to the past um you lose your spiritual freedom you lose revelation and you lose liberty and again it's not a devotion to truth but it's a it's a devotion to doctrines and creeds and that's institutional religion and that's what has the bad rap that it that's what it is that when you hear someone say i don't want to be religious or i'm not religious what they're basically saying is that they don't want to be associated with institutional religious authority all right y'all all aboard it all makes sense to you all anybody want to add anything or get clarifications that? that makes sense very good all right all right so now because we don't have institutional religious authority personal religion still does not mean that we are just living our life um recklessly giving into every one of our selfish satisfactions and physical pleasures because anybody on this path we know that just selfish satisfactions and physical pleasures do not make you happy most of us at that's committed to this course already understands that just getting all the money you want, having all the fun you want, all the lovers you want, and the how biggest house you want is not going to make you happy. Self mastery transcends the gratifications of one's animal appetites and urges. So I have to stress that because a lot of times the people who say, well, I'm just spiritual, I don't live to religion, they still become unhappy because they have disregarded any sense of, of uh, any sense of value for self mastery. They've dis they've disregarded any sense of a uh, moral compass that doesn't allow them that that gives them a sense of self regulation. So even though we may shun away from institutional religion and those creeds and those doctrines, we still have to have a value in values over impulses because your animal evolutionary nature will lead you to a lot of unhappiness because you're, you're that that those instincts and those cravings will confuse you into thinking you want something that actually could bring you a lot of uh, harm and destruction all right so self-mastery is about transcending the gratifications of your app your animal nature now it's not about denying it's not self-denial it's transcending the key word is transcending those uh lower instincts and urges all right let's talk about science religion and philosophy all right so uh the definition of science science is using reason Science uses reason to discover things. It is powered by facts, okay? Science, the, the science has reason that there is an it. There is an absolute. There is some supreme divine intelligence. Any intelligent science will understand there's some divine higher power guiding things. Religion uses faith to assess the truth or the value of the facts that is, and they're helped by revelation. They're helped by the revelation from the spirit. And it helps them understand the value of what science has discovered. They help understand the science, help understand the value, the lasting significance, the lasting usefulness of the things in the world that science have discovered. And philosophy is when you bring it together and you interpret, well, what does this mean? What does this mean, what science has revealed about the planet Earth being this many years old and we're part of a cosmic system of other planets? What is the value? Where do we get, how do we, how do we discern value from that from our spiritual revelation? And then how do we use the wisdom from what does that mean in our individual lives, in our individual philosophy? So your personal religion should always reflect science, which is, which is reason, faith, and wisdom, which is how do you interpret what something means, all right? And your personal philosophy is what you are going to be the root of your religion. Religion and philosophy go hand in hand.
but philosophy deals with how you interpret when you read Abraham Hicks books, when you read something from Edgar Casey, what does it mean to you personally? And how do you take that meaning and put in your day-to-day -day life? That's your personal philosophy that creates your ultimate religion. But you also don't disregard science. And that is another limitation of institutional religion. Institutional religion will deny science so quick and so fast. I know, I know religious people and it's sad and it's funny, who deny the reality of dinosaurs because it's not in the Bible. And we all are familiar with the story of um, the great scientists who were almost, uh, some were burned at the stake by the church uh, for their scientific discoveries. So, uh, and that's what institutional religion does because they, they can't allow anything that could be discovered that is going to interfere with their creed and their doctrines. But a true personal religion, you rely on science. You let, you, you, you value science, you appreciate science to help you develop even more values and help you create a, a stronger philosophy, philosophy for living, all right? Let's talk about your religious philosophy. And religious philosophy is basically your, it's an effective philosophy of living that is combined when you, that is formed, rather, when you combine your cosmic insight with your emotional reactions to your social and economic environment. So when you decide that you're going to change your emotional reactions to your environment based upon your cosmic insights, your discovery, what, the values that you have, what you've made out of the meanings of your revelation, what you make out of science. When you combine all that and you begin to dictate your emotional reactions from your social interactions and your economic environment, that is, why, that is what your religious philosophy helps you do. It lets you know you're not gonna have a breakdown because you just got this notice that so-and-so and so became the new president of the United States of America, all right? You don't have to react horribly or you don't have to go into a mental breakdown. Um, one time I was, right after Donald Trump got in office, I was eating restaurant the next day and there was a lady who, who was of a different race and background and she just walked up to the table to me and the person eating and just walked up to our table and said, this is so unbelievable. I don't know what to do. What are y'all gonna do? This was a stranger. She was so um, be, bewildered and lost. And it, it, it really broke my heart um, that she, it was bothering her so bad that she came out of her table to talk to us about it, like a, a stranger. And she just said, I can't even sleep. She said, I didn't even sleep last night. And she was just talking to us like she knew us. Um, and again, I'm not criticizing her, but what that, cause we all, we all have moments like that. When we get those insufficient, uh, notices from Wells Fargo or, or, uh, the loss of our lover, we all have those moments where we have to force our emotional reactions to align with our religious philosophy. And if we have one, um, it's better for us. If we don't, it can cause a lot of unhappiness. All right, let's wrap this up a little bit. Let's move right ahead. Um, now, you have inherited urges that, for the most part, will not be able to be fundamentally modified, meaning you have tendencies that you have inherited from your family, from your ancestors. You have um, lifestyle habits and stuff that you they're, 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 they weren't just developing this in this lifetime. Okay, you have stuff that come from karmic uh, lifetimes. You have stuff that you've got in your bloodline, these bloodline curses. Some of these things will not be fundamentally, fundamentally modified, but what will be modified is your response, is your emo, emo, emotional responses to those tendencies, to those proclivities, to those inherited urges from your racial background, from your genetic environmental background. Um, if you really want to get a good insight into inherited urges and nature and nurture and how you've been shaped from your society, check out the documentary Three Identical Strangers. It is a must 
for anybody that's on this path of spiritual enlightenment. It's called Three Identical Strangers. It is a story about three uh, triplets who were well, uh, triplets who were separated at birth, and they met each other in their twenties. And the documentary shows how their lives were similar based on things that they just inherited, but yet how they were very different based on how they were nurtured. Um, so, and it makes you feel like you don't have any control over your life when you watch the documentary. But what religion does is it does gives you the ability to change, uh, maybe not your nature, but it does change your reactions and your responses to your nature. And over time, your character can be improved and your character can be changed. All right. So in a strong mind, your emotional re responses are integrated, coordinated, and you have a unified personality. You don't just react to every whim and move. You got astrological things happening on the planet. You got full moons. You got the lining up of certain planets. You got your inherited urges. You got, if you're empathic, you're picking up the desires and urges from people around you, right? You're giving in to the urges that the society is suggesting to you. You got all these things happening. But when you have a strong mind, and you live your life according to your religious philosophy and your values, you're always coordinating your responses, no matter what's happening around you, you're always coordinating those responses to your values and to your truths. And that way you're gonna not be just giving into the astrological tendencies or the whatever the, the mercury retrograde influences are or your inherited pro proclivities. When you don't have that strong mind and you don't have that sense of ability to stay focused on your values, your truths, you're going to create a lot of fragmentation in yourself because you're going to have higher ideals, higher thoughts, but you got lower urges or thoughts of you just want to be lazy. You don't want to take action. You want to give into this instead of be disciplined. You want to, you're going to give into all of the empathic movements that you get. And again, a person that's empathic, you are constantly picking up other people's energies and desires. And if you're not aware of that, you're going to be making decisions and making moves based on other people's desires and not in unity with your own values and ideals. And that will cannot uh, lead to anything except your unhappiness. All right. One of my favorite quotes that really sum up the need for personal religion is from Wild Waldo Emerson. And while Father Emerson said this, this is the last paragraph of his essay, Self-Reliance. If you have not read Self-Reliance, it is a part of your revelation, okay? This, this man reveals some cosmic truths in this essay. It's called Self-Reliance. I encourage you to find it. It's free online. Read it. it is, it's kind of archaic in this language. It's very old English, um, but it is very worth it, the truths that arise. And he says this, political victories, the rise of minimum wage, the healing of your aches, the securing of a loan, or some other favorable event raises your spirit and you think good days are preparing for you. He says, don't believe it. Nothing can bring you peace but yourself. Nothing can bring you peace but the triumph of your principles. Nothing is going to be able to bring you long-lasting, sublime peace and power but you being loyal and devoted to your values, to your supreme reality, to your supreme truths over and over and over again. Peace comes from within and peace comes from your devotion to your truth. If you just live your life carelessly, freestyle, just waiting on the next political victory, waiting on the lottery win, and you think when those things happen, you're going to find happiness, it's not. It cannot happen because that fearful mind of yours will always create some dis-ease and emotional frustration. And peace is the absence of turmoil and doubt. That peace that you get from your personal religion, it creates an immunity to disappointment. And that immunity from disappointment creates the freedom from fear. And when you have that freedom from fear, you can begin to live a courageous life. You can begin to experience a joyful living life. And these smart religions, these smart personal religions, what they do when you have peace and you have the freedom of fear, you're able to love every man. You're able to promote the brotherhood of mankind. 
You're able to have this belief in a friendly personality of deity, and you have the sense of liberty of your personal belief and interpretation. And those qualities advance our society and they advance our civilization. Our civilization is going to be advanced. Our civilization is going to, to grow and evolve to a world that we all are desirous of seeing and believing in when we each individually have our personal smart religion and we have released ourselves from fear and we're able to really let our values of oneness our values of our, our, our belief in a friendly deity and the value to give people liberty to believe what they want to believe and have whatever interpretation you want to have, we will evolve society and we will advance our civilization to the next level. And that, my friends, is today's lesson two on the importance of why we are setting this course to create a personal religion for ourselves and eventually help influence our friends to create their personal, personal, personal religion. All right, questions, comments, insights, things to be clarified, any insights anybody wanna add or ahas or, or own different revelations? Please. Hi, Adam, this is Denise, how are you? Hey, Denise. I, I just want to say thank you. This has been amazing. My, my background has been rooted in new thought, starting from Myrtle and Charles Fillmore and Emily Cady and Lessons in Truth. And right now, my journey has me studying Buddhism to integrate with that. But this just, you know, I'm, I was, I'm studying that right now. <clears throat> However, just listening to this just kind of reminded me of of that base in new thought and i just want to say thank you i'm really enjoying this i never forgot about that it's just i've kind of moved on to you know to integrate something else within my yeah. my yes. journey and, and and coming up with my own personal religion as you speak in my own practice so thank you so much for this thank you l i know you can hear me for bringing me into this fold because this is amazing and so i just want to say thank you and i'm looking forward to continuing and now being able to do both and not say okay well i'll do this on my own and you know as i'm studying buddhism that now i can do both of them as i figure out what my next um the next path on my journey amen absolutely i'm so glad that you uh, received it and thank you for being joining joining us can't wait to get some of your insights and your own valuable philosophy. <laughs> uh, I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. All right. Hi, good, good morning, everybody. Adam, this is Elle. Hey, Elle. Um, hi, uh, Denise. Thank you so much for being open and willing to accept the invitation and to be a part of this call today. Adam, you are absolutely amazing. <laughs> I, so so the whole call, I, first of all, I jumped on the call 15 minutes late and then I was driving the entire way. I just arrived to my destination. So I caught like maybe half of what you were saying, but I really need to process and I just really want to, I hope that you are going to provide the slides. And if this was, was this call recorded? I, I was trying to record it. So I did have some issues with my computer, but I, so I don't know if it stopped, but I will send you the slides as soon as I, as soon as we hang up, I will send this PowerPoint to you. And would you be willing to take a personal call so that I can kind of ask questions once I process and re-go over the slides? Sure, this sure. We can definitely schedule that. Um, just text me some times available. I'd be happy to do that. And so what I've heard has moved me to the point of like tears, seriously, because I have been lost and I have been seeking for a long time. And I'm finally on a journey of just trying to, you know, self-discovery and learning about religion and trying to apply it to my personal life and how I can create my own personal walk. So I'm all over this. It mm. is aligning with things that I have believed, but didn't really know I believed, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. You and know, and, and so I'm new and I'm just, oh, I'm so hungry. And this is so amazing. I just want you to know that you are on the right path let me tell oh, you thank you yes God. yeah so i'm excited to continue on and again once i get a chance to go over the slides and just process i'm going to be in touch so we can dialogue okay. about it awesome okay thank I'll you to it. you're very welcome my pleasure um I, this, I, I've this, got something. so this is nicole here so you know adam i just want to say thank you too and i just want to say that 
when you study so many different things and, you know, you are kind of attracted and you keep, you start out and you're just collecting things, bits and pieces from here and there. And, you know, these other great thought leaders um, that also kind of do similar work to you that is, that is also older. Okay. Cause you know, one of my favorite teachers is Wayne Dyer. And I mean, Wayne Dyer has been passed, I don't know, at least, I don't know, four or five, six years now. I can't think, but I mean, he came out in the nineties, you mm -hmm. know, I was, I, mean, I was just graduating from high school back then, but to have you um, kind of lay this foundation of understanding because what, what's going on, like you're starting from the very beginning. So you have a foundation and some groundwork on how did I, how did I get this way? Like, how did I get like this anyways? <laughs> so I really appreciate that. And I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Thank all of you for sharing. Anybody got any questions or any more comments or just if anything need to be any thoughts or concepts need to be clarified before we end the call. Oh, but Adam, I really do like um, that recording would really be great because or I don't know if you can do some kind of dictation or something, especially the very last part um, where you were talking about peace um, gives you absence, absence, absence in the um, you start to get immunity from disappointment, um, release from fear. Like I couldn't get all of that in my notes. Mm -hmm. and, um, that close was just really amazing. Thank you. So we really do need that. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Adam, Adam, this is, oh, this is Denise. I just wanted to tell everybody that right now, I'm looking at my phone and I told you I'm kind of challenged on this whole Zoom thing, but realize I've been recording since the beginning. So at some point, maybe I can figure out if you don't have it, figure awesome. out how I can retrieve this recording of this, of today's lesson and send awesome. it out. And I might have to meet with somebody and I just give them my phone and they figure it out for me. Okay. Thank you, Denise. That'd be awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Well, if y'all have appreciated today, I hope y'all have feel free to send out appreciation donation. You can, um, I don't have my slide with my PayPal information. Oh, there it go. I do have it. Um, Next week, we're going to talk about naming your reality. We're going to talk about what are your truths, the values, more about peace, and um, you as your own shaman and, and uh, priest. You can cash at me, Adam from Adam, uh, with the two Ds, or you can PayPal me. Um, I'll chat that. I'll write that in the chat right now for you all to get. Um, but feel free to, um, oops, I just lost something. Um, but yes, y'all can feel free to, uh, you're more than welcome to show your appreciation and bring a friend the next time. Um, I'm just going to type in here real quickly, my cash app ID in the chat room so you can have it and my PayPal. Um, but I look forward to seeing you all back here. Um, Next week, same time, same channel, um, and uh, we'll continue the journey as we create our personal religions. Namaste. Thank you all for journeying with me, and have a great Sunday, great week. Don't forget to pay attention and journal those questions I asked before. How do you see this working in your life uh, throughout the week? Uh, think about some new, be willing to share new insights, new revelations that you get from your own intuitive sources on what I've said. Um, Talk to everybody about, um, just talk to everybody uh, that you can about uh, your journey. Um, that's not what I was trying to say, but what I want to say is basically jot down some notes so we can have more to share. Because I know you all have been on a journey for a long time, so we want to get those jewels out of your mind. All right, You want to get your own ideas and share into this conversation. So journal some stuff and think about how what we said this week and last week applies to you or how you see different examples and analogies. All right, everybody. Namaste. See y'all next Sunday. Namaste. Bye-bye.